Okay, and I see in the chat, uh, we already have a question. We got our first question. Uh, I don't post names, but I do like to post the text just for people that are watching this like asynchronously. Uh, our first question is, any tips for getting matches on Tinder? Uh, my, my pro tip is uh, don't use Tinder. All right, so we are going to be doing the design for Tinder this week uh, for the resources. I haven't seen this in any books, at least. Um, I've seen a couple of other channels do that, but um, I don't really trust other YouTube channels a whole lot with their solutions. I've seen some that are like really botched. Um, and I, I, I understand how hypocritical that is as a person that runs a YouTube channel myself. And I'll just say like, you know, I'm, I'm giving it my best shot. <laughs> Um, requirements, uh, recommend, um, accounts to the user. You're going to recommend other people's profiles to the user. And then the user is going to swipe left or right to indicate whether they like the displayed account or not. Um, if two users like each other, it's a match and you should send them a notification. Uh, any questions before we dive into the diagram for this? I see one question in the chat. All right, how do we define a match? It's, uh, so it's when two users like each other. So uh, both users have to swipe right on each other. Right means they like you, left means they don't like you. Um, And we're going to put that in quotes. It's the language of Tinder. I think most apps, most dating apps use the same functionality now, though. Um, it is it on the basis of some similarity. Oh, like the recommendation. Okay, well, so there's there's a match versus a recommendation. So um, a match is when they both do actually like each other. The recommendation is going to be based on some kind of internal score um, or it's, it's, it's a... Uh, you can use, um, you'll have rankings of, of um, similarity score. You can use um, a uh, inverted, so, so you'll have this bio that you have to fill out and it'll have like words in it. You can like pick out these um, words that are spe specific. Like if somebody says that they're a computer science major or if they're in nursing or something, or they like running, it could match people that are running by, um, you, you split the bio, bio into words, and then you can do this thing called IDFTF. I'm gonna write that. Um, so IDF, uh, TF, um, and uh, that is, uh, it means inverse document frequency, term frequency. First, I should specify that that there's there's the match aspect, and then there's, there's the recommendation aspect. And the, the match aspect is what your first question is coming from. And then the, the recommendation part, which comes before the match is the basis for, for recommending stuff. Um, pretty sure it also asks you what kind of, so I'm posting another thing from here. Yeah, so I mean, there, there's also that's, that's filtering. So um, that's, that's the filtering, which is um, age, uh, uh, age, well, it's it's not so there's you're supposed to be at least 18 in order to use that, but you can also do um an age bound and you can say that I want somebody that's between the ages of um um 18 to 20, 25. If you're like college aged, and then you can also do like um, you know, if you're you're way older and you're on the app, you might do that. Um and then uh we have another question in the chat and oh, it was um how long is a match valid for matches are so on some apps they do actually have a timer on the match and that if you don't reply within uh 40 hours of matching then um they like delete it um and that's in order to encourage engagement on the app and to actually reply and talk to people that you've matched with um, but on Tinder, I don't think it does that. And so it's uh, um, permanent. It's forever. Um, Tinder doesn't uh, uh, throw out your matches like um, other apps, I believe. Um, we're not going to do that in this problem. Um, we got another question. Can users see a history of their matches as a list? Well, yeah, yeah. So there's, 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 that's in the, the chat section. It's um, so after you match, it goes into this list of all your matches that you're able to message. And so then that's, that's where there's this less, 
uh, that's where this, this, there's this part of this app that we're not going to focus on, um, or maybe we'll focus on it later on tonight is um, the, the chat app aspect is that you basically have this contacts list and the contacts list is like all your matches, um, or is it just uh, a one-time notification? Um, so uh, the matches list uh, is kind of a um, chat app where all your contacts are your matches. Cool. Okay. S something like YouTube history where there's always a visible user. Yeah. Okay. I think we're kind of familiar with how this is going to work. So we can go ahead and um, kind of get started on that is that we will have a client. We're going to have the browser. It's not actually a browser, it's an app. So it's gonna be say app, um, so client um, app. It's gonna be the user in swiping mode, user um, in uh, the swipe screen. It's, so there's like screens and there's like swipe screen and that's going to be the focus of tonight. I'm going to specify that for out of scope is going to be the chat app aspect. We can cover that um, later tonight, but I really want to focus on the matching aspect, the, the recommendation and matching aspect. Um, so again, there's the app. You got to get those from somewhere. Uh, we are going to have, um, we're going to need a store. It's, it's a little bit easier if we go towards the um, like capture and we wind it back over to the recommendations aspect. Or uh, we can even maybe talk about the, um, maybe be easiest if we start off with talking about the, uh, the DB schema a little bit, which is of course going to become denormalized. Um, so we're going to have a user table. I don't like that font. Uh, Going to be some kind of user table. So you'll have, uh, let's go, have a user ID. Say that's something like one, two, three, four. And then you'll have a name. I'm just going to use mine. My, my username, it's usually, they just kind of show the first name. Um, and then we're going to have, uh, there'll be some kind of user details that you'll expand, um, like the bio. Um, and then uh, there's actually an internal score that um, Tinder uses for, it's, it's your attractiveness score. And so it actually does use something kind of like that to um, maybe it shows you at least a certain number of users that are above an attractiveness score, just so that you're not like, oh, I don't like any of these things that are getting recommended lately. Um, I think it's also used for matching similarly attractive people. Um, it it kind of makes sense if you think about it, but it, there's like an internal attractiveness score that kind of figures out based on other users ranking you and it assigns it to you. And then you're going to be, uh, so there's like the user table and then you have like a one-to-end relationship with, um, okay, I bend it like this. Yeah, sweet. All right. So it's a one-to-end relationship of a one record to another one for the likes. So we're going to say one-to-end relationship for likes. If it's a mutual like that goes into a match. And so uh, you could even have that as, so you would, you would store these through a, a join table. We're gonna have a join table. So uh, we're gonna call this the swipe match table. You'll have the uh, user ID of the one that's like viewing it, one, two, three, four. And then you'll have the, we're just gonna call it the other ID. We'll have something like 3470. And uh, I don't know if you actually need this, but you can have like a link ID to just, you, you, don't, you, you don't need this, but I think it would be useful for the, um, the chat aspect later on is um, a link ID to be associated with each pair, but this would kind of work as a primary key. Um, you're going to store each, 
in, in my opinion, you're going to store each record um, for each like separately because you're also going to have this um, this um, enum called swipe, and it's going to be um, like or dislike um, depending on if you right swipe or left swipe. Um, and so uh, if if um, I liked an account. Um, you would also need the other account to also like, and so this one would be the other account. You got to flip it and um, they would also have to like in order for it to come a match. Um, and so we should also have a is match flag and uh, that's going to result in some duplicated information. I think that's okay. Um, when you're going with NoSQL databases, you're usually going to have some duplication of information. Um, just to make um, the reads a little bit faster is that you have to do some kind of denormalization a little bit. But um, until this second person likes me back, so until this record is also written, is match is going to be set to false. And then as soon as the second one is written for them liking me back, be set to true. Um, and we'll show how that's going to work later on. I'm going to set it up possibly as a DB trigger. There's a couple of different options for how to do it. Uh, I see a question in the chat. I'll go ahead and answer it. Um, why is swipe match a different table? Well, so if you have it on the same table as just a list, um, that, um, well, so we might do that in order to denormalize it. Um, if you have a, well, so if, if you have a lot of, um, records though, it's, I, I think it's makes sense to um, federate it out and just leave it separated as another table. Um, it made a bit more sense as a separate table when I was looking at it with um, how you can set up the backend services. Um, let's go ahead and, and maybe explore the, the diagram a little bit more is that, um, so you have this and you would have the recommendations coming in and then you would have the swipe results coming out. So this one would be the recommendation service. Recommendation service. Sure, let's just go ahead and leave that as one big word. And then you're gonna have the swipe capture service. Should be over here. So you'll have recommended accounts will be coming in over here. And when you like or dislike the account, it could come out over here. And then, so you're asking if you could just go ahead and leave it merged as one big table in this database. I think it makes more sense to decouple it um, because I, I think you're gonna have, uh, the, the user's table should be read heavy. If you have just that on its own, it's read heavy while this one's write heavy. And so there's different optimizations you can make depending on whether a table's read heavy or write heavy. Um, so splitting them out, I think makes sense just for, um, allowing some optimizations to occur. Um, that is an interesting idea though, is that we could possibly have all the lists, all the matches as one big list. Well, so if, if you're storing all the likes though, to, you, um, some people like really go through like dozens of accounts in one day. And so then if you use it for like a month, that's like hundreds of preferences that you're putting into the swipe table. And so then if you had your likes stored over here, you'd have a list of um, hundreds of accounts. And, um, and then if you're trying to look up your matches, that would be really inefficient. And so I guess that would, uh, you would definitely like have like hundreds of likes. Um, and then it's you would have to find the, the the likes going both ways in order to find the matches, and that would be really inefficient if you don't split it out into that separate table. So you you, you should definitely be separating that out into a different table. Otherwise, it would be really inefficient um, for finding the matches. Yeah. Okay, 
Um, so I was saying that this should probably be split out into a user table and a um, swipe match table. So we're gonna have the uh, user data store, and then we'll have the, uh, the swipe match. data store over here. Okay, and so you'll be doing, well, oh, okay. Uh, there's recommendations, that's different. So recommendations is different. You're gonna need some kind of model that's generating uh, recommendations for that. Um, so that is gonna come off of a, uh, a data model, some kind of data model is gonna be doing that. Um, let's go ahead and explore the diagram a little bit more. Let's move this on up over here. Okay, so there's the user data store. Let's do this. Uh, so when you have a recommendation that's made and you're pulling it up, you're gonna be pulling up their pictures and stuff like that. And that should actually maybe, uh, so you don't wanna store pictures in the user data store. Um, you would have a CDN actually for should probably store their 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 pictures on a CDN. Um, so let's have a thing for that CDN of profile pics. And the bio can also possibly be put on the CDN because um, it's going to be a blob of like 500 or more characters. You might have a limit of like a thousand. You can even just store that as like a, a JSON blob of, of um, just profile details that just get rendered up on this thing. Um, you would also have the user data store for that'd be relevant for like the filtering stuff for the recommendations. So that and bio. But uh, you don't really need to have um, the bio stored directly in um, recommendations that are being made. Um, so you have a recommendation coming in, and then uh, off the response, off of that, you're going to fetch the profile pictures from the CDN, and then you're going to right swipe or left swipe. That gets recorded over here. You ping this service and it's going to do a write over here to the swipe match data store, which has this table over there. Okay. And then based on your preferences for an account, um, there'll be some kind of other thing that's doing analytics to come up with some recommendations. I think you would have um, there's kind of like a couple of different ways to do this. One is that you have a list of recommendations generated every single day. So I'm going to kind of iterate on that idea um, is that you'd have this nightly batch job that looks at your preferences and generates some swipe recommendations for the next day. Um, and um, uh, so there, there's actually a limit to how many swipes you can do in a single day on Tinder. It might be like a hundred. Other, uh, other apps might cap it down at like three or five. Like uh, there's this one called Coffee Meets Bagels. I think only gives you three or five swipes per day, um, which forces you to be a little bit more open-minded about who you're getting matched with and to actually look at it and think about it a little bit harder. Um, anyways, uh, we'll have a recommendation data store that we're going to queue up some options on. And they are going to be getting pulled into the recommendation service. And uh, I see we got a, another question in the chat. Can you use something like a Siamese neural network, which can generate a similarity between two given profiles and we can pre-cache those at some cadence? Um, Usually neural networks are used for um, classification. I think we are doing a classification approach. Uh, yeah, we, we are gonna be doing classification here instead of clustering, I think. Um, but uh, your swipe profile should not be recommendation. Well, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's something that is in the filtering for how you, Oh, come on now. Is it freezing up or did it not properly copy this? 
Well, so yeah, when we're generating the recommendations, it should not be pulling stuff that's already swiped. So we have that, and then we're actually going to have this copied over to an analytics here. You don't want to do analytics on an OLTP database. This is an OLTP database. This one is as well. Um, so we're going to want to do change data capture with maybe a, uh, a uh, DB trigger. Um, another approach is a stream. Um, but uh, Steve, uh, Steve from the channel of Life Engineered, who's a principal engineer, says uh, DB triggers work just fine. Um, but this is going to be like a data warehouse, or it could be uh, like an OLAP database, just something for analytics. Um, and then we're going to have this set of workers that runs once a night. Um, we're going to call it uh, worker uh, workers. And um, you're going to have the uh, data model will deployed uh, to the uh, worker machines. Um, you can do A-B testing. You, you should be doing A-B testing, but there's um, you, you have like these machines that run a nightly batch job. And um, you can have uh, which model is deployed to your set of machines or which one you're running on a set of accounts, uh, the, the, the uh, copy of your model or which edition or version of it can be stored on the recommendations records that you're gonna be putting over here. Um, but the worker is gonna pull in the, uh, it, it's data from the swipe data store copied over here, it's gonna pull in that data. It's gonna use that for generating a set of recommendations to, um, so it's gonna put out some rankings of accounts to the recommendations. It's gonna rank some stuff and whatever it ranks high, they'll have over here queued up for swiping on the next day. Okay, um, so the data model will be over here. You're gonna use um, a classification model. And so over here, you'll have recommendations. Let's maybe talk about what that'll look like a little bit. Um, you'll have a schema, it's the recommendation table. And so who are you recommending it for? That'll be the user ID. So that's recommending for me, user ID is that. And then uh, the rec ID of the other account, let's say it's 3470. So it's recommending this account and it'll have the score of something like uh, nine or let's say uh, 0 0.91. Usually you have, um, a, it's, it's a, you can have a score ranging from zero to one. It's the strength of that record. Um, in the output of the classifier when the worker is looking at a specific um, account under your preference, and it would be uh, a recommendation score ranging between zero and one in the output, then it'll spit it out over here. And then it's going to be pulling in the accounts that have the highest score. And um, of course, you'd, you'd be able to do your filtering over here in the recommendations. So you can actually change your, your filters the next day as you're going through the recommendations of like your age preference and the location preference. That's another thing you can filter by is that um, there's, there's um, age filtering and then there's also location filtering. It's another thing. Um, and so you're, you'll have this, these recommendations and um, I guess you could even inline the account data directly into it. And so then that would be like the, um, the rec age. So let's say they're uh, 22 years old. You could have their location, which is uh, lat longe. So like negative 42.37 degrees, comma um, 17.45 degrees. And so uh, you can have this in something like Elasticsearch, which has a quad tree for location filtering area. Um, and then you would just sort it by this. And then you can do uh, where clauses um, over there. I was indicating that it's like 0, 0.0 to 1.0 interval on the score part. Um, and then you can do filtering on top of that um, as you're pulling in the recommendations. Okay, I see more questions coming in. Um, you can use a bloom filter for this. Um, 
well, that's that's a a feature of your database itself. I don't you, you shouldn't be memorizing algorithms. Um, but uh, sets has been viewed or not viewed. Uh, you could so you're you're probably thinking like for pulling in whether or not a thing was met. Well, so th this is for like existence of a record. This is like a uniqueness thing. Um, like, does the record exist or not? This is, this is, that's what Bloom filters help with speeding up. What well, in our case, it's like, given my user ID, have I ever looked at them before? And um, you would maybe use a pair of user ID, rec ID, but it's, this is the recommendation table. So it would, that's not relevant here. Um, yeah, that's not relevant here. And the recommendation of an account can actually increase or decrease depending on the day. Um, oh, I forgot, this should also have like a date stamp. It should have like the day of the recommendation. So an, an account like on the next day, uh, so right now it's like 2023, 01, um, 28 is today. And then like it could reevaluate that account the next day and actually recommend it even higher. And then um, if I didn't get around to that record in the previous day, it elevated in the rankings the next day possibly. So then on the 29th, it might actually have a higher score or a lower score, which means that it'd be ranked higher or lower in my likelihood to see that account. Okay, um, I believe location plays an important factor. Well, so that's why location can be inlined into, that's why location can be inlined into the recommendations table. Okay, um, recommendation could be an hourly job based on location. Well, so yeah, yeah, you, you can, you, the, the batch job can be, um, this could run daily or hourly. It doesn't really matter. Um, and ideally it should actually be continuously run and you would actually do um, reinforcement learning. You'd be doing the, what's it called? Multi-arms bandit approach. I think Tinder might actually do multi-arms bandit. Um, a lot of recommendation engines actually do uh, multi-arms bandit. Um, so uh, the YouTube homepage uh, feed actually does multi-arms bandit. And so you could actually bring it, um, could even be continuous and use multi-arms bandit. Uh, but when you're doing it continuous, I don't know if you'd really be using a data store if you would just have it being hit directly. Um, I don't know how things look when it's when you go with uh, um, a, uh, what's it called? Um, Semi-supervised approach, a, a uh, shoot, I forgot the name of that one between supervised and unsupervised learning. Reinforcement learning, that's reinforcement learning. There, I'm gonna write it down so I don't forget it again, but it, that's from reinforcement learning. Um, and I, I'm less familiar with how machine learning models will look with reinforcement learning, but with classification, which is the one that I'm currently going with, um, you might want to uh, just have it cached output because the model might be kind of expensive to run, expensive meaning slow. Um, and so uh, you, you might want to just have it there. Um, you need a cache, a load balancer. I'm just going to post these. I always forget to use a load balancer. Yeah, I always forget to use a load balancer. Um, and sharding. Yeah, I can talk about what partitioning key I can use. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like talking about what type of partitioning key to use. Um, so yeah, you could use a load balance in front of there. Uh, let's just use this component. And then let's use like yellow. It's a good color for this. Maybe I'll just use green. Sure. Yeah, I always forget to use load balancers. You even use that on the swipes. The swipes should be occurring at the same rate as, well, actually you, you can go ahead and do, um, you could get a response, a, a list 
of recommendations from the recommendation service in the background. And then that would maybe make this a lot lower of a TPS. And so the TPS on this could actually be higher. Um, but if anything's gonna need a load balancer, it would probably be the swipe capture service. Uh, I totally forget about load balancers a ton though. With um, AWS, you just use an elastic load balancer, you just kind of throw it out there. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, partitioning keys. Yeah, okay. Um, we have the recommendation store, we have the swipe store. Uh, let's go ahead and move this up a little bit. And then I'm going to make a copy of this. And we'll talk about the keys for it. Here's the swipe match store. The primary key would consist of both of these. And you're basically just writing to it and then doing a DB trigger. Um, so this one, you could just kind of do consistent hashing on because it's you're not doing key range queries. So this one, you can literally just do consistent hashing, which I rarely recommend. On recommendation data store, you should probably do key range. If, if you're doing the key range query approach where it returns a list, you should not be doing, um, uh, you should not be doing consistent hashing. That would be a bad idea. So over here, you want to partition by this. And um, you would still have a, a primary key would still be like this. Rec ID is an account ID, um, but you're gonna do a partition key of this and then the other one's the sort key. Yeah. There we go. And then uh, this should be a quad tree as a secondary index. You do have those in Elasticsearch. So I'm feeling um, Elasticsearch for the technology on this. And uh, you would be doing a batched up write operation to it. So it's, this is kind of optimized for reads. So that should work pretty cleanly. And then this is also going to be a good uh, secondary next, as well as date. You could delete the old records. Actually, all these should probably be secondary indexes. All those should, yeah, they, they should all be secondary indexes. Yeah, and that's fine because Elasticsearch is a search. Uh, it's, it's um, oh shoot, I even forget the word for this, but it's one of those things that's, it's, it's a search engine or it's a, it's a, it's one of those databases that's optimized for having a crap load of secondary indexes. Yeah. Okay, I see some more questions in the chat we can get through. Um, why is consistent hashing a bad idea for lists? It's a bad idea when you're doing a key range query. And I actually have a YouTube video on that. It's, um, Uh, so that would be uh, a common mistake with choosing partitioning keys. You're going to do scatter gather, and if you do deep pagination in particular, it will absolutely obliterate your performance um, on key range queries because it has to do a join over the network. I don't think that aspect in particular about the deep pagination I brought up, um, but in general, when you're doing scatter gather, that's also really bad. Um, because then it means that you're going to be hosing all of your partitions. Um, yeah. And then I see another question um, with respect to sort key, uh, why we shouldn't use date for the sort key? Oh, well, so I think the old date sh you should just delete, but then Yes, you would want the recommendations for um, Yeah, I don't know if you do want the rec ID as the sort key. 
Well, you need it to be uniquely identified. You need it to be uniquely identified. That's that's crucial. I think you should maybe use the score. I, well, okay, so the, the score definitely needs to be a secondary next. You need it to be uniquely identified though. I don't know. You, you might have two accounts that have um, a close score. So if you do actually clip it to two decimal points, then that could result in, uh, you, you can't use date for, you, you definitely can't use date because you're gonna have multiple recommendations to user ID for, uh, so that would that would not be uniquely identifying. Uh, and the whole primary key has to be uniquely identifying. Good question though, good question. Um, we will have some time to live on the records. We'll be fetching top K records, maybe for user ID. Okay, we have more questions. I'm trying to get through here. Oh, actually, I wonder, I kind of want the recommendation data store to be Redis, because then it like automatic, so then that's fast. Uh, that'd be a, that'd be really fast retrieval of the records. So uh, with Twitter, they actually used to build the timeline on Redis. At least that's that's what was in, in Al Shu's book on on where, where they did the recommendation of how to make a news feed. They actually used Redis. So I'm now actually starting to feel um, Redis. I don't know if Redis has uh, quad trees. I think it has geo hash indexes. So you could maybe use um, a geo hash instead of a quad tree. Um, but yeah, I'm really feeling uh, Redis now. Um, so that was actually a really good idea. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, thank you. We'll be fetching the top K records maybe for a user ID. Yeah, yes, yeah, so that's why it's a partitioning key. Um, okay, Redis has, oh. Redis has spatial indexing. I thought it just had geohashing, but yeah, any kind of spatial indexing would would be uh, would be ideal. Um, okay, how would you add notification for match and messages? Great question. I got distracted there. Great question. So you're going to have the swipe, and you of course need to also have that captured through CDC for um, CDC with uh, DB trigger. And then I actually have a couple of different approaches for how you can handle um, the match. Is that one approach could be that you could just use a DB trigger that does a a uh, uh, one approach is that you would have a, a DB trigger that would then look at the um, other person's record. It would do a look at the other record for your own user ID, check if that is a match. And if so, it does a update on both of those. And then um, you could have it write out. It would also then do a call to a, um, you could just have a match service. You just call out the match service. When you identify a match, it then activates, it updates both of the records to have is match flag to true. And then it can go ahead and have a, a uh, notification service that then pushes it out to both the clients. There's yours, and then you would have the client app for your match. It's their phone, um, and you would have a notification service. So it could just be like SNS, uh, AWS SNS, but you would want to do uh, a notification. And this could, another approach could be that it would be uh, synchronous for your own things that right after you do the swipe and it does the re recording, it would return back that you got matched and then you would be able to like immediately go and uh, do stuff. And I'll explore that here in a second. Um, I first want to handle our approach one. Um, and so notify your match and it would also notify you. And we are going to make a little more space here for our arrows. Um, but yeah, so notification, uh, push notification to you, uh, to, your, to your match. And then another one straight to you over there. That is approach one. Let's cover approach two. Is um, We're going to copy all this. We're going to paste it over here. And let's zoom in. So you go over here, you do that, and then you could have this uh, 
So there's the service level, which is you could also have it uh, coordinated by the service directly instead of having the DB trigger do the match is that um, first it does your own swipe. And then second, the swipe capture service could on its own do a check against the other account for is it a match? And um, uh, so one, one record swipe and then two, perform match check. And then you could even have it, uh, you could even, even do the match update on the swipe capture service itself, or um, you could have it uh, delegate out that logic over to the match service. And then that one, you could even decouple it and have it done by a broker. Um, let's Let's maybe chill out for a second and just study the approach of having um, this one run the whole thing. And then we'll delegate it out to become asynchronous. But first I want to cover that synchronous approach is that you get the request in, you record the swipe, do a match check. Um, match check should go the other way. This is a data flow arrow. Um, so you're doing a read. And so the data flow arrow should look that way. And if it is a match, if the key range query says, yep, you've matched, then you do three, um, update both the records to uh, turn on the match flag. Uh, three, update the two match flags if it is a match. And then four is that you yourself, or you would, you would synchronously return the response to that first thing and you would not even have uh, the notification service. The notification service actually does need to still be there for your match to get uh, the notification. So I guess we didn't dodge the notification service directly, but we don't have that DB trigger doing it anymore. Um, so you do that, you update the match flags, tell the notification service, hey, send it out and then return the response of like, hey, you just match with it. So it's synchronous, no DB trigger. Um, yeah. And then, um, three, uh, um, three, we also have the match search approach the the match service approach, which decouples the matching logic completely. Um, so let's copy that. And we're going to do, um, the match service approach that is, uh, async, the async the approach where it's completely async. So here, you still do um, write the swipe, and then you are going to uh, send a thing over to the, uh, you're gonna have um, the match service, you're gonna tell the match service that like, hey, uh, now check if this swipe um, resulted in a match. Or you could even have it, uh, you could even have message broker triggered by a DB trigger over here. Um, that's another approach. Um, and then um, this one just does the right, then return. Yep, we captured your swipe. And um, that would result in the less the that, that would result in the lowest latency on this operation. I think you kind of want that to be low latency. Um, but you, you can also record the swipes asynchronously in the background of the app. So I mean, if it is lower, if it is a higher amount of latency, that's not the end of the world in that case. Um, but I feel like you, it might just be smart to keep it low latency and just have the swipe occur, uh, the swipe result in the match check um, asynchronously. Um, yeah. So there's there's actually like three or four different approaches for um, performing the match check. Okay. Um, let's go through any other questions that we have. Uh, can we explore Redis schema in detail? Uh, Redis does not have secondary indexes, right? Shoot. I'm starting to lean away from Redis now. Oh, I could do, yeah. Okay, so somebody did say something about um, a sorted set. Um, so we could maybe do, uh, we would have the user ID and also sort it by 
the rec, the score ID, and then you would just do the filtering further than that on the logic over here. Um, we have a couple of uh, secondary indexes though. We got, we got multiple here and um, you wanna filter by this. The score is gonna be pretty crucial here and the location is also going to be pretty crucial, I think. Um, well, I mean, are, do you really wanna have, I, I think you should not be making recommendations for people that are like super far from your current geolocation. Um, so there should maybe even be some filtering down that occurs when it's um, doing some data processing over here. Um, I'm starting to lean a lot more towards Elasticsearch though. Um, so let's maybe go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm leaning back towards Elasticsearch now. And then that would mean that we're not going to have a TTL and instead we'll just have um, some, some kind of cleanup job working every so often. Uh, clean up. Uh, job to kill any old records. So then you also really do not want to use Cassandra. Not that we were considering Cassandra, but uh, Cassandra would really not play nicely with a cleanup job because of the tombstone records. Um, okay, does DB trigger affect uh, right performance on DB? I've heard that it is a high overhead and um, I don't know, I thought it was flaky, but I heard it works off the right ahead log. Um, so you just kind of put up with it. Um, I, ha I mean, I have heard that DB triggers are, are DB triggers are definitely higher overhead. I don't know if that means it'll, it'll be- Is there a question? There it is. Hello? What were you saying about Redis? Okay, it's all right. Um, so we talked about the DB triggers. There are more to this question. Users are expected to make a lot of swipes. Yes, there will definitely be a lot of swipes. Uh, so I'm really feeling that key range query here, a list response over here. Um, I don't know if it'll be that so you could maybe oh this should probably be Cassandra this should this should be Cassandra yeah this this should definitely be um, Cassandra since uh, Cassandra's plays really nicely with high write operations and not doing a lot of uh, mutations it would it's great for event sourcing um, so yeah I think Cassandra would be nice um, and then you definitely avoid uh, if, if we go with the no DB trigger approach. That plays pretty nice. Um, yeah, so uh, do Cassandra without a trigger approach. So I'm I'm really liking my third approach right now, where you kick off that match processing work to be asynchronous, um, because if it is rather expensive. Um, and then it's you, you don't want to have that notification service call happen synchronously. I think that that in particular should happen in the background um, with the DB trigger logic. I mean that does kind of happen probably asynchronously, but having that work done on the database directly, which I think is what you would do with DB trigger, that sounds like a bad idea. And so then having it just kick it off over some other dedicated machines that you can scale independently is probably a smart idea. Um, yeah, good call out. Um, bring all swipes and the triggers. Yeah, it's a lot, it's probably a lot of work. So yeah, good comment there. Um, next question, scaling notifications could be itself. Big. Yes, that's, I don't wanna dig into notifications a whole lot because that on its own is actually a interview topic. Users will be overwhelmed, so need some check there and send only best matches. Well, so you you're only, oh, uh, um, well, so you're actually not going to get matches a lot. You're only going to get you're, you're going to have tons of recommendations, but um, for guys, you would maybe like match only ten percent of the time or less. You'd only get like 
maybe a couple matches per day. Couple meaning like up to two or three, not like so you, you'd go through like maybe 50 records and then only get two or three matches. So it's not like you're gonna get a crap load of notifications, in my opinion. Um, but uh scale for notifications, it, it should be decoupled from the capture service because yeah, it's it's a uh, different processing and it the, the logic itself requires a different scale than the swiping activity and this the swipe capture activity. Okay. Uh cool. All right. Was there anything else I wanted to cover? Um I might have had something for oh there's the updating your profile. So I have the CDN here. And then um Let's maybe copy this for digging into how user profile updates kind of work. Oh, I zoomed out way too much, but uh, so this is not an approach. This is just me digging into the user profile updates a little bit for clarity. And we can also maybe talk about the chat application aspect. So we have um, user um, user update profile. And then you're going to have the profile service and call that the profile service. It's going to do a write over to there and it'll push it into the user data store. And you're also going to have um, CDC data capture um, over to OLAP database that is also similarly going to want to have some uh, stuff captured. And you should also push it over to the CDN um, profile pictures in particular. You, you will probably have, um, maybe you should have a profile picture data store, like an S3 bucket. And um, for pictures, you can do a multi-part upload. If they're large files, you might be able to downscale them just on its own. But if it's multi-part upload, you just actually do that directly. You can actually talk to S3 directly and you would push those to the uh, CDN. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, I might have wanted, oh, there's the chat application aspect. And then I was also kind of thinking about, mm, oh, I can detail the uh, new data model deployment a bit, um, but also there is the chat application aspect. Let's maybe discuss the chat application aspect is that you would have so again, there's the client app, and then there's the chat screen. Uh, you'll have your list of matches. Uh, you pull one up for chatting with them, and um, it's just a chat app. And so you just have the uh, you have this. You're going to do um, web sockets, um, and you'll have a data store. It's the message data store. So you could send a message back in. It's going to write it over there. Um, have your chat screen. And then you're going to have matches chat screen. And um, you could have a WebSocket open. And then that is. Uh, Redis pub sub is one way to do that. So you have the chat, whoops, chat back in service. It's going to be horizontally scaled out, of course. And then you have a WebSocket connection with one specific one. So then this person's doing reads off of it. Let's use a box for showing that, like, hey, it is, um, how do I do no fill? Nice, okay. 
So we have that. You also need Redis pub sub. Redis pub sub. Uh, and then when you do your write, it's going to send it to Redis pub sub. And then Redis pub sub is going to send it over to the right machine and send it over to your match. Um, and then I've covered similar stuff like this over in the online auction. So we don't need to dig into it a whole lot. Um, when you're connecting, you're also going to pull up your matches off of the swipe match data store. It would look up your user ID, given your user ID, pull up um, all the other IDs that have an is match flag of true. And so we're going to do, it's a key range query. It's a key range query, just like that. Cool. Uh, I don't have scaling numbers for doing back and envelope calculations. Um, and most people just kind of want to see the diagram. I think I'm pretty happy with this, what we've got right now. Um, we're pretty deep into the meeting. It's been almost an hour. Um, so I think I can wrap it up. Uh, okay. Um, somebody posted some links and I'm posting this text file in the Discord afterwards, of course. Um, sure, yeah, I'll let you guys go though. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week. If you have any further questions, feel free to post them on Discord. Thanks, see you guys. Bye-bye.